Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Random Pets Laboratory Challenge, where we are going to be mixing and matching some genes from all around the world in order to see what kind of creations that we can bring forth into the lab. And today, we're actually celebrating a late World Leopard Day with one of the most beautiful of the spotty cats, the African Leopard. Just look at these rosettes too. Oh my gosh, this is from Pet Exotica, who created this design. Oh, I love that line down the back. How pretty. And oh, has just done such a great job of showing off one of the masters of camouflage and stealth hunting of the African wilderness, the leopard. So the leopard, my friends, is not to be confused with the jaguar, which we have also been making a lot of random pets genetics challenges with lately to celebrate our jungle expedition in Planet Zoo, because the leopard is actually a little bit smaller than the jaguar, although they are very, very similar in design and they both have these beautiful rosette spots on their sides, they are actually not as closely related as you might think. This spotty patterning just happens to be one of the best ways for big cats to be able to hide in the shadows and stalk their prey. And so the leopard and the jaguar have co-evolved to have extremely similar coats, even though they are not as closely related as you might think. They are both part of the big cat family. The jaguar of South America is a bit larger than the leopard uh, in a lot of ways. Both of them are able to climb and swim. However, the leopard spends more of its time on the ground and more of its time hauling its food into trees than the jaguar does. And the jaguar spends a ton of time in the water compared to the leopard, which I really can't blame the leopard because leopards happen to live in Africa where there's some big chomp chomp crocodiles hiding in the water as well. There are some crocodilians hiding in the waters of South America as, as well, but I don't think they're nearly as big as, you know, the huge, huge crocodiles that show up in Africa. So those are just like a couple quick differences between the leopards and jaguars. So even though we're staring at spots, try not to get too dizzy with all of those facts. And just remember they are two different species. The beautiful leopard being, um, oh gosh, just one of my favorites of the big cats. Africa has so many of the big, beautiful cats. And the leopard has to contend with living with the lions, as well as the cheetah, hyena, and many, many other predators. And so the leopard likes to spend a lot of its time up in trees, which is where I believe Angel, this particular leopard, happens to be sleeping on the day that an escaped Fox! An escaped pet fox named Webster actually happens to stroll on by. And Webster is a lovely fox who you would normally find like up in Europe or over here in North America. And he has a bit of a tragic fate. You see, Webster isn't supposed to be in Africa. That's not where he belongs. But he was the pet of some rich, spoiled brat in a family like that is rich and spoiled and made up of nothing but brats who came by on a safari and the kid just decided, I'm done with this pet. I want a pet lion now. Hopefully his parents, rich and spoiled as they are, did not get him a pet lion. However, he yeeted the little fox out of their safari truck and away Webster ran, seeking freedom from having to be dressed up for tea parties and dragged all over the world like some sort of little ragdoll toy. So, Webster is currently skipping about, completely oblivious to the fact he lives in such a dangerous place, uh, when he walks right under Angel's tree. And this is, of course, where the story takes us. We're gonna go ahead and have Angel jump down from the tree, preparing to make a quick snack out of Webster, except there's something about him. Maybe it's the bright coloring, maybe it's his extremely yippy little voice, maybe it's his big fluffy tail, but he just catches her eye. And so she spends a little bit of time chasing him around the tree, scaring poor Webster and making him think maybe being dressed up for tea parties wasn't so bad after all, when finally they come to an accord. And after a few days of an Angel, cautiously, somewhat curiously, and mostly because she has half of an Impala up in a tree and isn't particularly hungry at the moment, uh, they begin to explore the area together. And Angel teaches Webster how to make the most of his new African wilderness home. And then the weeks begin to slide by. 
they're still able to find plenty of food, and Angel slowly but surely stops seeing Webster as a potential future snack on legs. And Webster, having run into some of his very first lions, crocodiles, and hyenas, oh my, decides that life with Angel is probably a lot safer. He even begins to learn to try to climb a few of the lower trees to keep up off the ground and under the watchful eye of his wonderful Angel. And time goes on, time goes on, and the time finally comes for our crossbreed mixes! I guess our, our leopard fox cubs. Let's go ahead and do this, guys! Alright! Webster, take good care of your kids. Angel, good luck. I hope you get the fluffy, fluffy tail on your kids that you were hoping for. But alright, let's do this. We're gonna go ahead and mix these jeans. Also, I hope you guys enjoyed their random story that I literally made up as usual as I was talking. I uh, definitely didn't expect that out of Webster's past. Quite, oh, quite a tragic one. Oh my goodness, look at those sunset colored eyes. And look, whoever this is definitely got their dad's ears. Oh, you guys, welcome to our first little guy. Tyson, named after Leto's boxer pup. That's adorable. All right, well, come on in, Tyson. You are our very first leopard fox crossbreed, and I'm very excited to have you join the family. You are also a glutton who is aggressive. So he's, look at those little teeth. Look at those little teeth. And he's also very hairy. So that's going to keep us busy for a little while. But that's adorable, and I love how he has those gorgeous eyes. They just really seem like they would end up uh, fitting a beautiful African sunset, right? All right, let's go ahead and pull up the next one. We're going to get a lovely new puppy. There we go, there we go. I have to pull up one of your guys' names from the name list. Oh, and, oh, and this is not what I expected at all. But you guys, behold, this is Vera. Welcome, Vera. You don't look anything like I thought you would, but I'm very excited to see what you're going to grow up into. All right, Vera, you cannot actually produce wool even or milk or milk and wool or milk again. There we go. But you can be aggressive to be able to survive the wilderness. You can be a sleuth and you can be a hunter. So there we go, guys. I wasn't expecting that kind of mix for the next baby, but you never know what you're going to get when you are mixing and matching random genes. So let's go ahead and mix the next one. Got the name list working again. <gasps> Ooh, what if we end up with a melanistic leopard? That would be so cool. Oh, or a little fox. Hi, buddy. This is actually going to be Sierra. So welcome, Sierra, to the family. You're definitely going to stand out. I wonder, like, if we'll see the big tails. That's true. We may not be able to see if they're going to get fluffy tails until after they go ahead and grow up. And Sierra, you are also aggressive. There is just a very, uh, like, fierce show of teeth across the board. <laughs> Absolutely across the board on all of these puppies. Very good. They have an instinct of survival. I think Angel's quite proud. All right, let's go ahead and pull up the next one. And we're gonna have, come on, leopard spots. Come on, leopard spots. <gasps> oh, little fox. That's actually a beautiful face marking for Amanda. Amanda, I think you have your mother's body size. I, I'm. That's just my guess. But look at those beautiful eyes. Oh, Amanda, you're gonna turn out to be so pretty. I can just sense it. And you can't produce wool. However, Amanda is going to be a very loyal, active, sleuth of a puppy <laughs> so I think she's going to look cautiously before she leaps and then let's go ahead and pop over here dun 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 and we've got Webster whoops I went to, from Webster's angle that's fine we can use that for a little leaf welcome leaf oh we've got more of those really these aren't the demon eyes the red eyes these are more like orange eyes Oh my gosh, and we're ending up with a lot of fox puppies. So, so far we have three out of six of the puppies are fox puppies. And Leaf, you are going to be a smart, jumpy, maybe you can get way up into the trees that way, friendly little fox leopard cub. Okay, that's going to be a mix that we're going to have to see. How would that serve you well to be friendly in the savanna? Maybe to be able to get along with your other like siblings, perhaps? All right, and then finally, we're going to go ahead 
and have the last baby. Angel's quite curious about this litter. This is, after all, an experiment, and she'll have to go ahead and see what they're going to grow up into being before she has confidence that they'll be able to survive in the fierce wilds, but... Yes! Another spotty little one who we're going to be naming Gumdrop from Horsey Horse's suggestion. There we go. All right, Gumdrop, you are... There we go, that show of teeth that makes their mom very, very proud and relieved. Adventurous and a couch potato, which in this case probably means a tree potato who likes to hang out in the trees, as leopards do, to take a nice nap away from everything else that wants to eat you. Oh my goodness, how many aggressive pups did we end up with? We have Gumdrop, ready with that show of teeth. And then we have got Sierra, Vera, and Tyson. So four out of six of these little ones are ready to go ahead and defend themselves, which I think makes Angel feel extremely relieved and perhaps makes Webster feel a little bit concerned about his own future well-being, but confident that surely his kids won't eat him, right? Right? But all right, guys, let's go ahead and grow these ones up and see what happens when we crossbreed a leopard and a fox. <gasps> oh, days. This is much cooler than I thought was going to happen. Tyson, you're amazing. Okay, guys, I actually am very happy, very relieved. Look at this boy. Tyson, you are one of my favorite creations we have ever made in this lab yet. Excellent. Excellent. This is why you should always just have confidence and throw yourself behind the random genes, guys. You just don't know what you're going to get. And Tyson, he just looks majestic. He absolutely just looks majestic. Like somebody who could challenge the lions for control of a territory, if you ask me. All right, let's see what his siblings look like. Vera? <laughs> Vera, you look like a little lost puppy. I'm gonna be honest. I think Vera just somehow ended up with a gene that made her sort of, you know, just almost an albino, but not quite. And she also has really short fur. Fingers crossed everybody will just mistake her for a meerkat and let her get on with her day. And then we have got Sierra with these adorable green eyes. <gasps> oh, wow! Okay, we've got to randomize your tail, dear, because you can't have a dragon tail. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? You're gonna have a twirly tail? <laughs> okay, Sierra, you're pulling off the beautiful look, absolutely. That is one heckin' exotic leopard fox, if I have ever seen one. Very happy with these results, holy cow. I think Mama Leopard is just too beautiful to let her genes not be passed down the line. All right, really pleased? Vera, I love you too, you're our little mongoose, don't worry. And then we've also got Amanda. Amanda, you cannot have a dragon tail or a skeleton tail or a horse tail. You can indeed have that tail though. Amanda, Amanda looks a little bit like a battle scarred veteran if you ask me. Like she looks like she's ready to go out and she's ready to, to be the rough and tough one who doesn't really have any extra fur or ears or anything that some of their enemies could grab onto in the fight for their territory. Amanda accepted. Very cool. Leaf with those gorgeous eyes, very unique snout, itty bitty legs. What are you going to grow up to be, my friend? Whoa. Okay. And I need to randomize the tail again. You cannot have, you, you also unfortunately cannot have like six tails. That would be really cool, but you just can't. Uh, you can have a twirly tail though. And there's Leaf, you guys. Also very, very much like Sierra, uh, except he looks a little bit more fierce. I think we just created a pack of new animals who is going to take over some territory. Oh, this is this is a good mix. I think that Angel is quite proud that she didn't end up eating her little Webster all that time ago. And finally, let's see what Gumdrop, who, despite the name, is also extremely aggressive and has snappy snap teeth, will grow up into. Gumdrop, I was really building up for you to be able to become a big, fierce predator, but you're just so cute. Oh my goodness. Okay, you can stay and protect Daddy Webster back at the, the family leopard tree because that'll, that'll just have to do for you. But all right, guys, so there we go to our shock and surprise. I think Tyson is like one of my all-time favorite 
favorite creations we've ever done, but all of these turned out fantastic. Who is your favorite mix, the most unexpected outcome of this blending of genes? And if you guys have any more suggestions, keep them rolling in because I love putting in all of these random genes, mixing and matching them, and having unexpected outcomes. As usual, all you need to do to become one of these fascinating creations in the lab is leave a comment down below. And if you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please subscribing. Do please consider subscribing. There we go. But most importantly, my friends, stay curious. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.